All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to welcome Nathan Young, who is in Vancouver, Canada. How are you doing, Nathan? Good, doing well. Yeah. Not as sunny as you. What's that? Not as sunny. Uh, and Nathan's a, 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 a marketing strategist over 10 years of experience in advising B2B businesses, helped numerous companies build their marketing teams from scratch, delivering successful go-to-market deployments and launching new products into the market. And what we want to talk about today is there's an interesting phenomenon now about we, we, we've talked about sales and marketing alignment forever, but the chief revenue officer role and sales and marketing the, the CRO role seems to be the one that finally is maybe overcoming those silos and bringing them together. So um, what, are, what are your thoughts on that, Nathan, on that CRO role? How has that really been changing the landscape? I think it's been changing the landscape because it's it's really been focusing on this idea that, um, you know, you're, you're the chief revenue officer. It doesn't matter where that revenue is coming from. You're you're predominantly accountable for that. And so I think it's 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 made it almost easier for people to think about marketing and sales not as two different silos, but as a really a single unit. And I'll give you a good example. Um, you know, recently I, I had a conversation with one of our clients, and they were really talking about MQLs and SQLs and talking about inbounds and talking about all these things. And I said, well, why don't you think about marketing as also a productivity hack? Um, you know, one of the things that I think is not something you can escape, there are organizations that are predominantly sales oriented, which yep. means they're very outbound oriented. So why why are you constantly forcing these kind of call it industry norm um, kind mm. of KPIs for marketing? Um, but why don't you focus it on productivity? What if marketing was actually just purely a function to increase the productivity of your sales? Right. That's 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 not that's not a bad thing. If they can if if marketing can double or triple the value of every hour your salespeople are doing, then they actually really have no KPIs and their KPIs are actually related to your sales productivity KPIs. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. And mm -hmm. then of course there's product led growth where you know it's very KPI oriented, it's very MQL, SQL, inbound oriented. Um, and that's also great too, but then still someone has to close that person. Sometimes it's not always a, a self-led funnel. Mm -hmm. Um, so this this idea of a revenue officer looking at in how do I maximize revenue, not necessarily how do I maximize my outbound versus just my inbound. Right, right. And I think that's where the blending is really coming in. Yeah, no, I know. I I think you're right there, and it's a, it's an interesting point that you made around you know KPIs and metrics because I do think that marketing often uses outdated KPIs and metrics, or in some cases struggles to come up and like comes up with a bunch of ones but they're meaningless to sales in many ways and i think that's where often the disconnect is because it what 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 marketing is measuring and what sales are doing just don't tend to be in sync yeah it's 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 not in sync and then i think there's like this this like constant need or want for like attribution to be 100% and mm -hmm. so you know i think i think a lot of people forget that we try to have KPIs as like this absolute guide, but realistically it's not. It's more of a contextual relevant, like like relativity guide, right? You wanna see trends, um, it's especially when in, in marketing where, as you said, it, we're, we're kind of using outdated, I wouldn't say necessarily outdated, but maybe not like 100% attributable stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and therefore like they're useful, but they're not useful in the context of an absolute number. They're useful in the context of a time mm -hmm. timeline, right? If it's trending upwards, it's generally a good thing. If it's trending downwards, it's generally a bad thing. But as an absolute number, it's it's kind of meaningless. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think it does always go back down to, you know, what is our conversion rate? Um, are, are, are our actual MQLs or marketing qualified leads good leads? Um, and how long is the sales cycle really happening? And have we helped influence that? And I think that's that's really important. Again, that's blending into well, a lot of that. It's outside of the marketing responsibility. Like we don't have control over the salespeople, mm -hmm. but we have control over the tools they use. Um, mm -hmm. And if we produce better tools, then that sales cycle, um, that quality of the leads, the closing rates should get better. Yeah. And I, I think one of the other things, and I think that hopefully the CRO role uh, will help going forward and, and exactly what you just said, but it's also aligning the, the priorities of both and understanding uh, understanding both. And I think that's part of the reason, part of the thing the CRO can do that nobody else can do is like translate sales and marketing for each other. Yeah, and, and be like the proper mediator. 
Yes. Um, you know, because, because I feel like there's a lot of this like push pull mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's not productive. Right. Yeah. The reality is it's it's simply not productive. The the more the more feedback that we get from sales, the better the marketing does, the better marketing does in terms of creating sales enablement tools or or qualifying inbound leads better, the better sales does. So it is really a positive kind of feedback mm -hmm. loop, but often um, you know, they're seen as almost opposing figures because they're almost incentivized to be like that. And that's mm -hmm. because we're forcing these frameworks on them that inherently don't actually align hundred percent. They align for each department. They don't necessarily align to a greater goal and maybe to a certain extent, but you know, you're incentivizing essentially two groups of people to be separate when they're really not, it really makes no sense. Right. Right. And have you seen, um, in, in CRO positions, um, how many times have you seen somebody who has really a good, strong marketing, um, a good strong marketing background or a good appreciation of marketing or enough of an understanding because a lot of CROs are put in obviously from the sales organization, but are you seeing either ones who have some marketing background or are people starting to look at, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the sales lead. I'm seeing. Um, so, so you're absolutely correct in the CRO roles. You're predominantly seeing people with heavy sales backgrounds, mm -hmm. which makes sense yeah. because inherently we're lazy and that kind of made sense. So, you know, mm -hmm. CRO salespeople it seems to match. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think as the role and responsibility matures in the market, I think people are starting to realize that might be a blend. But the funny thing is here, there's very few marketing people who have also run sales department. Yes. So there's few and far between. So I think, I think what's going to end up happening is either you're going to see more sales leader become much more technically savvy when it comes to marketing operations and marketing stacks, mm -hmm. um, or you're going to start seeing some marketing people really lean into the idea that maybe they want to own their own BDR teams and they actually want to be able to manage that themselves. And that's going to blend a bit more into a CR role in the future. Yeah, no, I think those, I, I think those are two very, very good points um, because yeah, I mean, it'd be it it'd be a lot for an organization to promote like a marketing person with no sales background into the CRO role. So I do think that um, gaining those other experiences is is going to help an enormous amount. And I think the other thing too, Nathan, is like let's face it. Um, marketing and sales is getting very complicated. I mean, market all different tools and platforms and all of that kind of thing. And I think that's also an area where the CRO can help, um, you know, guide because sometimes like marketing will run off and jump on the latest tools or whatever, or, or the latest platforms. Uh, and maybe there's a good reason for doing that, but that reason isn't understood by sales yet. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, I think that's the, the predominantly the biggest issue with marketing these days, almost, you know, every year we have something new that we have to be doing, mm -hmm. whether that's creating podcasts, creating videos, creating TikTok content, um, hosting, you know, community sessions, hosting community webinars, building a community, all these things, mm -hmm. almost every, you know, we're, we're the bane of our own existence, us good marketers, <laughs> right? We, we, we create things that are very, uh, desirable um, and and not necessarily always operationally the easiest things to do. And so marketing tends to be this this department that's kind of forced to do new things because we do such a good job selling it that our C suite then tells us that we need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 it's it's this constant push pull of like what is really going to work for the organization. Um, so so absolutely, I agree that the CRO is going to help you know manage those and and maybe keep marketing a little bit aligned. And and uh, and I think also maybe try to stop marketing from doing too much. And mm -hmm. I think that's often an issue, right? Mm -hmm. So I say to almost everyone and anyone who listened to me on any other of my podcasts, I always say sustainable and practical, right? Don't do everything because one, it's not sustainable. You can't do it for a long period of time. And two, it's not practical because you're, you're, you're a hundred percent. You're not executing on every single one of your tactics or initiatives or channels up to the hundred percent, right? Mm -hmm. You're probably doing it like 50, maybe at best 60. And, and, you know, I think uh, we've seen this in every part or facet of our role, whether that's your career, your business, you have to get past that like 80% of specialty to really get the benefit of whatever you're doing. So if you're mark, if like, if marketing is going off on like eBooks, case studies, sales enablement tools, webinars, there's no way they're doing it well. Right. Yeah. So I think the CRO could really help just be like, Hey, stop, you know, sales is seeing that this is working. So just focus on that.
Uh, yeah, and I think that's a gr- I think that's a great point because sometimes people overcomplicate things, but to just take a look at what is working and double down on it is is often the best way to go. And yeah, and I think that uh, marketing being under a CRO may help with you know just understanding where the audience is as well because yeah, you may say, "Oh, we're working on a TikTok initiative." And then you say, "Oh, great, right. Great. Where do our what, which of our customers are on TikTok or you know, when are they that's not our audience." So helping like keep everything very focused is I, lo- I love that idea. Yeah. And I, and I did this whole lecture for direct performance marketing and incrementality for, for Rhino VC here in Vancouver. And you know, the one, the one of the things that I, I talk about is, is doubling down is fine because realistically, if you haven't measured the incrementality, like the, mm-hmm. the, the available opportunity or capacity left in that channel, then the, the reality is, is there, there's probably a, a linearity where you can literally just scale that, right? Mm-hmm. And you, two times the spend, two times the after, two times the return. Yep. And then there's a point where you you kind of fizzle out and there's, and, and there's diminishing returns, but that kind of comes a lot later than you think. Um, and, and going into these newer channels, you know, people always forget there there is that learning curve. There is that kind of upper cliff when you first start where you're not going to get that performance, which means you're not using your team well, you're not getting the same return, but you should do that. But you should only do that once you've maximized the channel, right? Um, especially mm-hmm. when like every company is limited resources, we, 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 we need to maximize everyone's time. Yeah. And then there's the, then there's the, the sales operations function that has, you know, gotten a lot of attention over the last while. And that sometimes, and I've seen in the past, that sometimes is a little gray about what is sales operations, what is marketing. And those two tend to end up in a little bit, of, they either end up best buddies or in conflict. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, so my, this is my perspective, yep. right? My perspective is I want my sales teams to be hyper-focused in the one thing that they do well, which is they're typically technical experts. Mm-hmm. They're typically very good communicators. Um, they're very good listeners, and which means they can build relationships and they can solve problems. And so predominantly what that means is I need them on the phones, I need them nurturing, and I need them moving people who have already engaged with the organization. Sending out presentations, designing presentations, sending out email cadences, doing all that kind of stuff, that's technical work. Mm-hmm. That's technical operations work. Um, and, and then obviously utilizing the tools, you know, sorry, I, I suppose the only part that they need to utilize and for all you salespeople that don't do this, just input your, your data into the CRM, please. That's the only thing I ask. <laughs> um, just like for the love of God, do that, please. Yeah. And that's the only technical thing you need to do. Um, and, and, and the reality is, is like, I, I kind of want them just to focus on the relationship and, and like data entry to a certain extent. I, we'll, we'll try our best mm-hmm. to automate all that. Yeah. Um, but I find that the operations is always blending into marketing because the marketing stack and, and forgive me, maybe this is just the organizations I've been working with tend to be the more technically savvy, right? Um, so, so we're comfortable with setting up the cadences. We're comfortable setting up kind of the, the personalizations, we're, we're comfortable doing that all at scale. We're comfortable working with data enrichment tools. Um, whereas the salespeople might not be because they're busy. They're busy yeah. listening to our customers, listening to new potential clients and, and solving their problems, right? And that is what they're best at. Yeah. And then, and then there's a, and there's, of course, there's a, new, there's a new little wrinkle coming into play now, which is AI. And again, that's, that's a whole other discussion, but, but from a CRO perspective, I mean, you you need to start looking at, okay, how can I use AI as an enabler to have my salespeople be able to do more? But also, what role does it play? And what role is it playing with our with our customers and all of that? I think that's a whole area where sales and marketing are going to need to be very, very aligned on that because it could get chaotic very quickly. So it's it, it, this is kind of a zigzag. Um, yep. I don't know if you kind of perspective. My guess is... Um, we're going to become immune to personalizations. Mm-hmm. We're no longer going to understand whether or not personalization for any of the, the marketing stack or even the sales stack is actually real. And we're going to start craving human interaction. Now, the scary part is, is that I would say as of today, you can do that via video, but deliverability of video is a little bit here or there. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we also have now AI video coming along and in probably the next two or three years, you're probably going to be able to see this video right here, not with fingers, because for some reason, AI can't do fingers very well. Um, but this could become artificial. Mm-hmm. So I think there's going to be this move towards, I need to have authentic and real human interactions, which could possibly mean phone could come back. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, and sorry, I say phone could come back saying, I'm not trying to say that phone isn't there, but phones become difficult. 
Yeah. Um, and I think there's going to be a part where this human interaction, this need for actually seeing that someone is authentically real is going to become a thing. And that's going to become an edge, which means, um, you know, AI is going to do uh, is, is likely going to push um, the need for more humans, more resources uh, yeah. to actually do the work because people are becoming kind of just they're, they're going to get banner blindness in the form of AI. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think so. And I think uh, uh, this idea of kind of putting technology between you and the customer and trying to sort of keep them at arm's length, I think people are, are fed up with that. And I think, you know, they, and during the pandemic, obviously, people got even more uh, attuned to wanting human connection. But yeah, now we're going into a world where nobody knows what's real anymore or, you know, and it's going to get more and more like that. I mean, you mentioned... Uh, you know, yeah, you can do AI video now easily with avatars, with speaking avatars, you can't tell the difference. It's getting scarily, uh, it's getting scarily good. But I think the point at the end of the day is this is an opportunity for you to get the edge with the human connection. We've even done it ourselves. We are our whole support. You know, we call it wingman. You know, we actually say we want you to call us. We we don't, you know, we want to interact with you. We and it'll be a human. It'll never be a bot and stuff like that, because that, that's what we're getting from people. That's what they want. And I think you're right. I think if if CROs out there, they should really focus on looking at how they can get their salespeople into more human contact. And, and at the end of the day, everyone just wants to have safety. Yeah, um, and, and, and I mean this in the sense that like, whether it's purely on a capitalistic perspective, um, people still just want to know that they're being taken care of. Like that's that's really the premise of, of almost any luxury good or any luxury mm -hmm. service. It's, it's this idea of an elevate, elevated human-like interaction with you. And there's no price to that, yeah. um, especially at the upper end of the market. And so if, if an organization can economically build that into their business model, you you can be damn sure that there's a market that's going to want to pay for mm. that. Oh yeah, no, I I, th I think I think a hundred percent, and I just think that whole craving for 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 human interaction, and I think safety, exactly what you just said, it's it's safety, and a lot of these surveys and stuff now are saying that the the thing that people crave the most is just three things: it's seen, heard, and understood, and. And if you're doing everything through technology or you're doing everything through AI or whatever, like people are never going to really feel seen, heard and understood. You need that layer on top where they realize that, yes, there's a human who's who's getting what I'm doing here. Yeah, because, uh, you know, albeit there's a very small sample of this world that's been perfectly fine to have this human interaction with an artificial object. I think, mm -hmm. you know, a, a vast majority, call it the mass of the market, is likely going to want that human interaction, right? AI is never really going to replicate that 100%. Um, it might maybe 10, 15 years from now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for, for the foreseeable future right now, um, you know, th there's going to be that want for that, that authenticity. Yeah. And then just uh, just as we as we come to towards the end, what what is what are what is one piece of advice that you would give to a brand new CRO to be successful, if, particularly if they're, you know, managing both sales and marketing for the first time? I th I think if a CRO comes in and the C-suite above goes, "Hey, like I have no visibility on marketing. I need better ideas on marketing." I think you you need to just step away for a second and and not be forced into the the typical KPIs that I think everyone's trying to chase. The reality is your role is a CRO. So your, your role is predominantly to increase revenue. Yeah. Um, how you do that, it, it shouldn't matter, right? So so don't, don't sit there and be like, how many MQLs are we getting from our websites? How many leads are we getting from a webinar? Forget about all that for a second. Just think about how are you going to maximize the productivity of your team? And you might actually want to focus on, you know, where are the gaps in, in your organization to, to really optimize that so that um, you ultimately increase either uh, your closing rates or you increase your top of funnel, like whatever it is. And, and again, not look at this in this like very strict confined framework of like what marketing needs to be. And that's why I really say there's nothing wrong with a marketing team, like a one or two man team um, or person team that that's literally there to increase productivity of your salespeople, right? There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that, but you have to KPI it like that. So if you're going to bring on two resources to double the productivity, then you're measuring productivity, you're measuring crows rates, you're measuring top of funnel, but you're measuring that purely from sales KPIs, not from like a marketing KPI perspective. Um, I think, I think that is really important for people to look at because that's doubling down, right? Yeah. That's just another form of doubling down. 
And I don't think people see it that way. Um, you know, doubling down in sales is like, we got to hire more salespeople. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one part. But yeah. what if I doubled your productivity? Because now I don't have them dealing with PowerPoint, yep. managing calls, you know, managing all these nitty gritty things that are really just not the highest and best use of their time. That's also doubling down, right? Yeah. No, I'm not, uh, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think, and I think that, and I think a lot of marketing people would welcome that because they would welcome the opportunity to really s be able to point at the impact on sales and for sales to be able to see it very obviously. I mean, that obviously is the key to long-term good relations between the two is when they see the value in each other. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. And I think, and I think that's a great way to do it if the organization is willing to look at it through that right. lens. Absolutely. Well, listen, Nathan, this has been fantastic. All of Nathan's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Um, so we're a fractional CMO group. We we help build teams from zero to one. Uh, you can look at my website is uh, findyouraudience.online. And then you could also see some of my funny marketing bites on Instagram at fya.marketingbytes. And that's with a Y, not an I. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. I, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, I'll go look at them. Yeah, it might get me off my panda videos, but uh, that's which Instagram just flooding my thing with panda videos and monkey videos now, and they're totally addictive. So I have to, I have to wean myself off looking at them. <laughs> get some good video, video marketing content in there. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, listen. Thanks again, um, Nathan. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, John.